Hello once again, AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School, and we are at video number two in our series over the improper integral. It's topic 6.13 from the AP Calculus CED. And we're going to take a look at our second example. We're going to be talking about the improper integral of a, an exponential function. But the first thing I want to do is I want to recap a little bit of what we did at the end of the previous video. And if you recall, we did example one. Where we found the improper integration of the function 1 over x from 1 to infinity. And what we discovered is that this diverged. In other words, we had an answer that was too big to count, an area that we couldn't possibly wrap our heads around. Graphically, it looked a little something like this. We have our function 1 over x sketched. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to find the area between 1. And I'm just going to let my right boundary go as high as I can possibly make it, which really I can't go any farther than 100, at least with the screen that I have presented for you here. But as I work my way towards 100, you can see that there is still an amount of increasing behavior for that particular area under the curve, right? It's not increasing quite as fast, but we deduced that this would end up increasing, increasing, increasing over time, and it would be essentially too big to count, and we said that this was going to be a divergent improper integral. And as you can see from the second page, by, able, by being able to use the, the functionality of the calculator, I can use infinity as an upper boundary and verify this answer. But let's take a look at another improper integral. We're now going to take a look at our example two. Now, if you remember from the previous example, the previous video, we talked about how you cannot allow this infinity to reside in that upper boundary area, in that particular environment. So what you're going to have to do is think about rewriting this problem so that you can use some arbitrary constant for that upper limit and then apply the idea uh, uh, for um, the, the apply the idea of the limit, I should say, to allow that arbitrary constant to approach infinity. And what we typically do would use b for that upper boundary. You really can use pretty much any letter of the alphabet. I would stay away from x, and you would then allow that b to approach infinity and you would integrate the function at hand, which in this case it is e to the negative x with respect to x. Now what this is going to allow us to do is to officially use the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, after you've played around with this a little bit, it's probably likely that you're going to discover that if you did not write that limit statement and you actually took the integral of this and you plugged in infinity and you plugged in one and subtracted like a normal definite integral, it's very likely that you'll get the same answer, especially for problems like this. It's very important that you understand that if you have a free response setup type question, you're not going to receive full credit unless you rearrange this, rewrite this, so that you no longer have that infinity boundary. That's going to be very important. So in this particular problem, we then notice that we can integrate e to the negative x. And if you think about that for just a little bit, you would end up getting negative e to the negative x. The integral and the derivative actually have the same answer. And now you can go ahead and plug in the boundaries. And then as I plug in the boundaries, I may go ahead and do a little bit of thinking here. What I'm going to do is rewrite this e to the negative x as 1 over e to the positive x. Then I can put my b in there, and then I'll subtract, and then I have another occurrence of negative 1 over e to the positive x, where I can now plop my 1 in for that exponent spot. At this point, we can go ahead and let our limit do its work. Let's let this b get super big. So if b gets really big, what does e to the big become? Well, it turns out that it gets even bigger, right? When you have e to the 10,000 power, e to the 100,000, e to the 1 millionth power, we get a very large number in that denominator. Because that very large number is in that denominator, that's going to cause this overall fraction 
to become very small. And it becomes so small that it takes on a value essentially of zero. Our two negatives would make a plus, and because one over e is a constant, we don't do anything else with it, and it turns out that our answer is indeed one over e. Let's take a look at the graphing calculator and see what it has to say about this problem. So here we go. First of all, let's check out the definite integration functionality. So I will do my shortcut, shift plus. We're going to integrate from one up to positive infinity, which I can use from that particular button. And then we have e raised to the negative x with respect to x. Letting the calculator do the work, I end up with e to the negative 1, which does indeed match the answer that we had, 1 over e. Now, if you look at this graphically, if I move on to this next page, I've went ahead and sketched e to the negative x. Now, what I might do is kind of open up some room here. How about we take this guy all the way out to, say, 100, kind of like what we did before. And then let's say, let's find the integral. And let's see if I can get this to start at 1. It might be kind of tricky, but I think that's pretty darn close to starting there at 1. And I can see that I'm going to accumulate area under the curve, apparently. But it's not like it's changing a whole lot. Well, it's very likely changing. It's just that it's changing in a decimal place so far beyond the third decimal place that it doesn't look like we're having much of an impact as we continue to move to the right. In other words, the area between this curve and the x-axis is so infinitesimally small as we move to the right that we're able to count that area. And it turns out that if we add it all together, we get, as you can guess, our good friend 1 over e. So there's a graphical representation of an improper integral that does indeed converge. Stick around for some more videos because we have a lot more in store in terms of what you can expect from improper integration.